welcome to this special edition by Union Solidarity International. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by a great comrade, Mario Angaro, who's the international coordinator of FISAC, CGIL, who represent tens of thousands of finance and banking workers in Italy. However, it's not the most perfect of topics to be speaking with Mario on because currently Italian employers are pressing ahead with changing the terms and conditions of hundreds of thousands of workers in the sector which is resulting in a strike on Friday. Mario, first of all, welcome and please give us a little bit of background about the dispute that is happening on Friday. Yes, many thanks, Andrew. Uh, indeed, uh, uh, we as FISAC CJL represent around uh, 80,000 members and alongside with the other major union in the, in the industry, in the finance industry in Italy, I can say that the finance in in Italy are uh, that our union members are around uh, uh, 200,000 or, or even more than 200,000 people uh, so we are uh, we've always been a uh, considerable uh, strength in, in the industry traditionally in Italy we still are a considerable strength and uh, uh, among the number of uh, 300,000 employees, I have to say uh, we are uh, compelled uh, to a very strong industrial action at the moment uh, since uh, the, the, the issue under discussion is the National Collective Agreement for bank employees in Italy. We've always had uh, a national uh, collective agreement for the whole industry covering uh, this 300,000, more than 300,000 people, uh, workers, bank workers. And uh, uh, it's the first time that um, the, um, the Banking Employers Association decides unilaterally to terminate this agreement. So the, terminate, the formal termination of this agreement means that without any renewal, as from next 1st of April, all the Italian bank workers will find themselves without any kind of national collective agreement. Thank you, Mario, for that detailed response. And of course, we are covering this national dispute on USI's website and our social media streams but the termination or the endeavour to end the collective and company-wide agreement is going to result in some substantial changes in the working conditions of workers in the finance sector. Mario could you just give a few illustrations of what the employers are proposing to change? Well, actually, uh, the employers are looking at uh, a scenario made just of company collective agreements where, where and when it's possible, uh, which means, of course, uh, uh, a deeper, stronger uh, diminishing uh, of uh, all the terms and conditions. It means that bank workers will become definitely much poorer than they are and definitely much weaker than they are. Uh, so also in terms of working hours, for instance, uh, with, without no um, national collective agreement, uh, we risk, well, we probably will lose our 37 and a half hour working week because the law uh, uh, talks about 40 hours per week. Uh, we we will lose uh, uh, the the protection clauses uh, in terms of unfair relocation. We will lose uh, also uh, the provision concerning holidays and day off uh, that would be reduced to the legal provision of twenty workdays per per year. There will 
there will be no more compulsory training during the working hours and training and vocational training is an essential tool at the, uh, at the moment uh, in, uh, in the current situation to improve the quality not just of the bank workers, the quality of the bank workers in terms of the quality of the bank service, of the bank products they deliver and they have to sell. And uh, there will be a, a, a general diminishing of, of, of the salary because the, the salary is made of a, of a number of elements and without the national collective agreement we won't have uh, uh, these these elements any longer, or they would be definitely uh, definitely uh, diminished in terms of their weight and importance. And uh, what make make us uh, really outrageous, if we, if I can say like this, is that uh, uh, the top manager, a top manager, average income in the last year, two thousand and fourteen was uh, uh, 3.7 million euro, I repeat, 3.7 million euro, the, the, the average income of a top banking manager in Italy, which means more than 3 million UK pounds, to, to make it easy for you, while the average income, the average salary of a bank employee in Italy is around 40,000 euro per year. It means that it would take 100 years, one century, for a normal bank employee to get to the salary of one year salary, one year bonuses, and one year income of a top management management in Italy. And this growing inequality is, has been growing all over through the, the years of the big crisis. So it's been growing since 2008 which is a scandal. And uh, so what we say, what I would like to say, they want to keep their privileges uh, uh, and to keep their privileges, they want to cancel our rights. Mario, thanks for that very detailed response. And because I wasn't very good at mathematics at school, I actually did a short calculation there whereby if the workers are being expected to work three hours more a week, that will result in 156 hours more throughout the whole of the year, not taking into consideration the reduction in holidays entitlement. So workers in Italy are facing the prospect of working the best part of a month in the year more as a result of these changes. Never mind the termination of national collective agreements and the drive to actually end company-wide agreements where we can have the situation where it could be site-on-site -site agreements which would be an absolute disaster for terms and conditions. Now I know a number of the, the companies who are proposing these changes of course like many financial institutions have bases in the UK and in Ireland and in North America. Mario, could you just tell us maybe some of the financial institutions who are proposing these changes in Italy and if they have a presence in the UK, Ireland or indeed North America? Well, um, precisely these proposals uh, to, well, the proposals of uh, the initiative to terminate the National Collective Agreement comes from the Banking uh, Employers Association. So it's not coming precisely from one bank or from one group rather than uh, or from another group. But of course the, the National Employers Association is supported by the banks and uh, alongside that there is also the Cooperative Banking Association alongside with uh, the private uh, bank association if you like. But of course, uh, uh, well, behind this, uh, we, we have also the biggest groups in Tesa San Paolo, which is the biggest group uh, in Italy, uh, Unicredit, which is uh, uh, one of the biggest uh, groups uh, in Italy, and alongside with it is San Paolo, they are spread all over uh, uh, Europe, I think also in the UK. But uh, uh, consider also that uh, UK groups uh, such as Barclays, for instance, 
uh, or Credit Suisse, which is based in London, or HSBC are have their um, subsidiaries in Italy, employing uh, uh, many thousand people. So uh, there is a, a, a transnational dimension, but the transnational dimension, which is more relevant, in my opinion, is that uh, the level of the industrial relations in, in the banking industry in Italy, in the finance industry in Italy, has always been very high, very powerful. So we've always been very strong in terms of trade unions at the national level, at the company level, and we've always had a very productive, a very strong dialogue, social dialogue with the employers. Uh, we are, uh, I, I don't want to give an impression of a conflicting attitude towards the employers. It's not, we, we've never had a conflicting attitude. We've also had a, a very kind of an attitude to the dialogue, to the negotiation, to have the negotiation when it when it when it's needed, but to get to an agreement that what we want is a banking industry which is functioning and which is functioning towards the economy in Italy. So if we are now going on a general strike, industrial action like this is because we are really compelled to. There is no way, uh, uh, no other way to uh, uh, how can I say to keep and to and to to fight uh, for our rights and to keep them and I have to say uh, we have been organizing we we are still uh, making an, a, a number of meetings because in Italy you are allowed to have meetings with the employees during the working time 10, 10 hours per year and they've been participative uh, by a, a huge mass of people um, we uh, we had a, a we and we are having a big success in terms of participation which is uh, 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 we, we, we 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 predict we will have a, a, a stronger and uh, a very wide participation in terms of, of the general strike we're going to have in Italy next Friday uh, all day through Mario, uh, grazie mille for that contribution to Union Solidarity International and for making people aware of not only the domestic but the transnational implications of the dispute which is happening on Friday. And of course, as you said, it's very important to have that dialogue and conversation with employers to have a functioning financial system. But what you have told us about today is an imposition by the Employers Association which has compelled you to take this action. You have our full solidarity, comrade, and we will be covering this dispute across all of our streams so that people are aware of what is going on within the financial sector within Italy. So thank you very much, comrade. Thanks to you. The very last thing I want to say is that when they attack the industrial relations in the banking industry in Italy, uh, where we have a very high level, we also have a low, very high level of industrial relations, it's because uh, they are attacking a, a European-wide system of industrial relations. So if, if, we, if the employers win their battle and defeat us in Italy, uh, it, it's going to be a huge problem, not just in Italy, but I think a Europe-wide problem. Thank you, thank you for your for your uh, availability.